With newfound determination, Valentina composed an email to Diego. She kept it vague, simply asking to meet for coffee after work. A public place would allow them to speak freely without raising suspicions. The rest of the workday dragged on. Valentina's mind focused on the upcoming meeting. Five o'clock finally arrived, prompting her swift exit from the office. At the coffee shop, she spied Diego and hurried over. His eyes widened as he took in her shaved head, but she silenced his questions with a look that said, Later. Once settled with their coffees, Valentina revealed everything in hushed tones. Diego listened gravely, jotting notes in a small notebook. His expression turned solemn as he promised to tap into his investigative resources, pledging to carefully expose the gang's exploitation scheme. For the first time that day, Valentina felt a surge of hope. With Diego's help, justice could prevail. Valentina sat at her desk, her mind swirling as she tried to process everything that had just transpired. The cool air against her now bare scalp served as a chilling reminder of her new, vulnerable state. She wanted nothing more than to break down and cry. But she knew the ever-watchful eyes of the gang members were upon her. With trembling fingers, she logged into her work computer and tried to focus on the tasks at hand. But concentration eluded her, replaced by a sense of violation and injustice. How could this have happened to her? She was just an ordinary woman trying to make an honest living. Now she was tangled in a web of extortion and deceit. As her co-workers filtered into the office, she dreaded the impending conversations. Their pitying looks and probing questions were too much to bear. When a colleague approached and gently asked what had happened, Valentina froze. The gang's threatening words rang in her mind. Mustering her courage, she forced a smile and uttered the explanation she had been instructed to give. I shaved my head to show solidarity with those battling cancer. The lies burned her tongue, but she had no choice. So it went, each curious co-worker greeted with the same fabricated tale about altruism and empathy. Inside, Valentina's spirit raged against the injustice even as she maintained a calm exterior. At lunch break, she avoided the crowd, ducking into an empty conference room. Finally alone, she broke down, sobs racking her body. She mourned the loss of her hair, her dignity, her power. But the walls of the conference room stifled her cries. Weeping loudly could attract attention, jeopardizing her already precarious situation. Wiping her eyes, Valentina knew she had to be strategic. Going to the police was too risky for now. The gang had eyes everywhere. But there had to be another way, someone who could help without alerting the authorities. She thought of Diego, her childhood friend who now worked as a journalist. Surely he had connections, resources to discreetly investigate shady operations like this criminal gang. Hope flickered inside her. Diego could be the key to safely exposing the extortion scheme without directly implicating her. With newfound determination, Valentina composed an email to Diego. She kept it vague, simply asking to meet for coffee after work. A public place would allow them to speak freely without raising suspicions. The rest of the workday dragged on. Valentina's mind focused on the upcoming meeting. Five o'clock finally arrived, prompting her swift exit from the office. At the coffee shop, she spied Diego and hurried over. His eyes widened as he took in her shaved head, but she silenced his questions with a look that said, later. Once settled with their coffees, Valentina revealed everything in hushed tones. Diego listened gravely, jotting notes in a small notebook, his expression turned solemn as he promised to tap into his investigative resources, pledging to carefully expose the gang's exploitation scheme. For the first time that day, 
Valentina felt a surge of hope. With Diego's help, justice could prevail. Valentina's blood ran cold as her phone rang, the name strictly flashing ominously on the screen. She had thought her covert meeting with Diego was secure, but somehow the gang leader had caught wind of her betrayal. With trembling hands, she answered. Strictly's menacing voice oozed through the speaker. Well, well, did you really think we wouldn't find out about your little chat with the journalist? We told you what would happen if you talked. Valentina's heart hammered in her chest. How could she have been so naive? Of course, the gang had ways of monitoring her. She thought of the microphone strictly mentioned. They must have installed spyware on her phone. Please, I'm sorry, Valentina pleaded desperately. I won't contact him again, just don't hurt me. Strictly chuckled darkly. Too late for apologies. You defied us, and now you will pay. The call ended abruptly, leaving Valentina reeling in dread. Diego sat across from her, his face etched with concern. What do we do now? I can get you police protection, he began. No, Valentina interrupted, her voice quivering. They said they would know if I involved the police. I, I have to go back. Stay safe, Diego. Before he could protest, she gathered her belongings and hurried out of the cafe, her mind racing. She had to get off the grid, find a way to escape the gang's clutches. As she turned down an alley, a black van screeched up beside her. Strong arms grabbed her, and a cloth covered her face. The chemical odor overwhelmed her senses before everything went dark. When Valentina awoke, she found herself in a dim, concrete room. Terror seized her as three gang members entered, their eyes glinting cruelly. You should not have betrayed us, one spat. Valentina's blood turned to ice as she noticed the clippers in his hand. They roughly forced her into a chair and she struggled in vain against her binds. Tears streamed down her face as the buzz of the clippers filled the room once more. This time they shaved even closer, the blades scraping ruthlessly over her already raw scalp. When the gang members finally left her, Valentina crumbled. Great heaving sobs tore from her throat. She had never felt so broken, so powerless. But she knew this was only the beginning of the torment they would inflict upon her for daring to defy them. Valentina looked on in horror as Diego was dragged into the dimly lit room and forced into the barber chair before her. His eyes met hers, conveying a mixture of fear and remorse. The gang members surrounding them were unmoved by Diego's pleas for mercy. One of them switched on the clippers, the menacing buzz permeating the tense air. No, please, Valentina cried out desperately. Punish me if you must, but leave him be. Her cries fell on deaf ears. With ruthless efficiency, the gang member sheared away Diego's dark locks. He squeezed his eyes shut against the degradation, but refused to give his tormentors the satisfaction of seeing him break.